All right, so we're recording now. Um, I'm going to count, count three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to three, two, one, and then I'm going to play the, the intro. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, Happy 2021 and welcome to the Creative Nights podcast, everyone. Woohoo! We're finally 2021. You know, it feels like 2020 was just around, just right here, just yesterday, but thank God it's gone. No one, nothing, no part of 2020 anymore. So I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's Eve with the family and friends. New Year's, hopefully, you guys didn't party too hard. You guys, you know, starting off the week, you know, fired up and ready to go, you know, kick 2021's ass. So, um, for 2021, we're starting off fresh. Uh, I know I recorded a few past episodes, but we're going to say that that was season one. Um, you know, just a few episodes, but we're going to consider that season one. And we're going to start off season two, and we're going to start off like strong and re- running down the road. All right. So that being said, today we have a guest on the show. And he is a photographer, a videographer, a beat producer. He's a father, and he's, also, he's actually a big friend of mine really close friend of mine you know i've known him now for a couple of years um some of you may know him as my art your eyes on instagram or you can also know him as play dirty on the beat uh so everybody let's welcome deontay thomas on the show yo yo thank you man thank you thank you so much man it's a pleasure to uh be on the show man first of the year uh of 2021 i'm excited man this is exciting man for 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 to be on your show and 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 just you know to, to bring us in let's do this awesome hey, well, hey thanks for coming on the show you know it's uh been in the making we've been talking about it bring, getting you on the show for an episode you know best nothing better than to start kick off the the year with you you know i mean we talk all the time and it's uh it's about time we uh we do this all right so um appreciate it for sure imagine uh how many conversations could have should have been recorded just just on the fly or just talking you know of all the times we've talked and hung out and all that stuff man hey so, man we should we should bring in those uh those those recordings we had from like back in was it early last year maybe with santiago uh-huh. remember yeah that'd be dope <laughs> bring yeah, those on the show sure. like hey like hey let's see what let's see where our train of thought was back then well i i know in in that particular case i was the uh my role was the motivational photographer. So like I had the first segment of the show basically, and it was the, you know, just to get basically photographers out of their mind and off their ass, you know, basically, you know, just, just pushing, pushing the envelope, letting everybody know that, you know, just to go out and shoot and stop thinking, you know, just, just do, you know, figure it out while you're doing it, you know, and, and basically, that was kind of like my message but it was intensified and you know tons of analogies and all that other stuff oh yeah that was uh it, that was a very uh more philosoph- philosophical uh more more than anything because we talked about you know like that mentality having that mentality of uh you know getting out there and doing it but um so hey what, what have you been up to what's uh what's tell me something that's uh new with you what's going on well, so, uh, man, you know, just, just, uh, 2020, I guess, uh, obviously set everybody down, you know, and, and, uh, within that year, I actually took it as an opportunity, but, you know, it was more so discovery, I guess. Um, and, you know, it went from basically shooting, uh, food photography for Grubhub and then, uh, through one of my business partners, Alex, who actually was shooting with me as well. Uh, I discovered, I guess, music, you know, and it's, I don't know if it's weird to say that, but her music discovered me uh, more so in the field that, you know, I felt that I can actually produce it. Uh, so I want to say about, uh, what was it? Maybe late, late April around there, I actually finally, you know, uh, took the plunge and actually bought my first MPC. Uh, prior to that, I actually had brought uh, a Fruity Loop studio, uh, but just basically making samples and stuff like that. So uh, within that time, man, I um, 
I've been making music. You know, I've been I've been blending all of these, the music, the photography and the video all together. Like basically it's for me, it's it's really full circle. Um, and currently I'm basically working on my sound. You know, it's it's, it's more of development of me being a little bit picky but also knowing what I want, knowing, knowing the feel that I want to deliver uh, moving forward, you know, so that's kind of what I've been up to. Oh yeah. And for those of you guys who don't know, our intro is actually made by him. So big thank you for you to let me borrow that beat and, you know, apply that to our intro for the podcast. Right. Uh, for sure. I, I know when I first heard it, I'm like, this is it. This is the one. Uh, like, and I saved it. I'm like, this is good. This is the one. Cause you know, you know what we've talked about this, you know, when you have a banger, you know it. For sure. Well, I think, I think it comes down to, you know, a feel, you know, like it just, you just feel it. Like, and that's any song, man, or any sound, for instance, you know, you just, it, it takes you somewhere. You might, you might not be able to describe it. You might be able to describe it. Uh, I particularly didn't think that, that, that was a banger banger, but you feel that way and that's all that matters you know what i'm saying like that's that and that's in creating it it's the same thing like if you have that feeling whatever it is whatever you hit whatever noise it makes like you just go with it that's that like that's that's all it has to that's that's all that has to happen for you to create something just in general you know but music in particular it it should be all about feel it's it's about uh that emotion that made you, that provoked you to say, you know what, I'm going to go down this way because that made me feel this way. Or, or it should be here. It should be in a video. It should be a slide. So with some pictures, it should be whatever. Right. So. Yeah. And it's actually, that's, it's the same way with photography. And I know, you know, this sometimes we take some of these shots out here and we think they're just like, they're mediocre shots, but then you give them to, you know, the client and they're like, that's the shot. That's the one I want. And in your head, we're like, but this one over here is like 10 times better. But again, everybody has their own uh, opinion, their own, the, the way that we see things and hear things. And I mean, to me, that beat itself was like the one for me that was like, I, I like this. I love this. this. This is the one, you know, I know you have a, a bunch of other bangers, you know. So for anybody else who wants to hear his music, he's on Spotify. Uh, you can check out, check him out on YouTube. Um, I don't know your, your YouTube channel. So you want, you can, you want to shout that out? Sure. Yeah. So play dirty on the beat as well. Everything's uh, pretty uh, unisex to the uh, social media. So everything's play dirty on the beat or my art, your eyes. Uh, basically, for the most part, got them all locked down, at least the major ones, even some of the smaller ones that uh, are just being distributed to uh, the music sites that are just basically posting the music on everything. So SoundCloud, all of those, it's it's everywhere, basically. Yeah, so go check them out. Anybody who's an artist and likes to, you know, anybody who's a music artist and looking for a beat, get in touch with him. He's got some bangers, man. So uh, I know earlier when I introduced you, I said that you were a photographer and a videographer. And I kind of wanted to center the podcast around that experience because, oh, my God. I mean, when it comes to that, you're my go to guy. So I have a big question for you. And uh, that's pretty much to kick off the podcast now that we've caught up. And is um, I want to I want you to talk to me about taking the leap from having a nine to five job to being a full time photographer. For sure, for sure. Um, so, I mean, I listen to you guys' uh, podcast, uh, and and I think it was your first one, and you shouted me out towards the end. And um, obviously, uh, you know, we had you see me at work and. You know, that's that's how we linked up was through photography or, you know, that's how our bond group was through photography. And uh, obviously you got to see that kind of outside looking in perspective uh, on me and, of course, yourself, you know, because obviously we were talking about photography uh, and, and, and just just the different levels to it. Um, so taking a leap for me was definitely opportunity bound like uh because i just didn't have enough to get me out of that situation so even though things were going 
really good through photography. Um, you know, I guess it's all in steps, man. It's all in stride, you know, and it's like, I guess what gave me the confidence was that I had built up to that. Like, like I never really plateaued through photography. It was always like, what's next? Like, okay, I'm gonna shoot models, right? Cool. Let me shoot some models. Great. Oh, you know, this dude's shooting food and he has a huge Instagram account. Let me hop on board with him and see what he's doing. Right. Okay. Let me, let me, you know, at least try to create some type of aesthetic through him, with him, whatever. Uh, So I've always kind of been, I guess, more opportunistic when it comes to photography and creating just in general. Um, And I guess that's what led me down the path, you know, so my first big breakthrough was uh, starting a magazine, Miss Curvy Magazine, for plus size women. I basically shot a uh, plus size model, Amber Nova. Uh, you can find her on social media. Our shoot went great. She basically booked me for the day. Uh, she paid my day rate, which nobody had ever paid before, which it felt great. I think it was like twelve hundred dollars for the day, and. Um, it's supposed to be like eight hours, but of course we didn't shoot that long. Uh, maybe, whatever, half the time. And, um, uh, yeah, so that kind of started it. You know, I shot her, you know, I le- always leave with photography. Uh, but well, I'll, I start with photography. Business is always in the back of my mind. Like, you know, if I see an opportunity or hear somebody talking about something, even if it's not my place, I'm probably going to throw my input in there, you know, like, as an idea or whatever. So I started that with her, took that ride, took that journey, was making great money. Our first year we made, you know, really good money, but splitting it two ways, just not enough for me to, I guess, take that leap. But I knew I had to, right? I knew that at some point, like, I just couldn't keep going to work anymore. I just couldn't keep doing my nine to five because it was burning me up. But it's funny though, how I played it was, from a lot of people looking from the outside in, they thought I was a full-time photographer. So there, <laughs> there goes the catch 22 where a lot of people, at least on Instagram, they were like, man, this dude's crushing it. He's, he has to be full-time, but I was working full-time as well. But that's just how much pride I took in me trying to get to the, A, enhance my skills and me trying to keep pushing and try to get those opportunities. Um, and then it finally hit, man. It was it was kind of magical. It all, almost for me, it all it happened all at once. You know, uh, I moved to a different state, Indianapolis, uh, and and but the only reason, so it kind of had to happen, honestly. Uh, and I'm glad I wasn't stuck in the whole nine to five mentality because I wouldn't have taken the risk and taken that jump if. If I didn't believe A in myself and then the opportunity that was presented to me, I'm just glad that I said yes to it because basically I got put in a position where I had to quit. If not, the opportunity was going to go to somebody else, kind of an opportunity of a lifetime to shoot for Grubhub. I mean, it was just substantial the amount of of capital that I was getting to basically travel around the country to shoot photography, food photography. And, you know, in Airbnb locations, basically our studios, you know, and it's it's, it's kind of like me kind of coming out my shell and, and me like doing the whole business thing, the invoices. I had done it all before in the past. It was very light. It was very like uh, elementary, I guess you could kind of say. So it really pushed me. And I, and I guess sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes obviously I know obviously we can be our own force to, to move things, to move things around, to push ourselves. But sometimes you also get pushed into doing something. And I think it was more so me, A, having to, to, to move out of the state. So I had to quit at some point, but there was more incentive to just because the opportunity was so grand that I had to take it. Right. So, and I also wanted to let people know that, he didn't just take this jump overnight. It was, this wasn't a, like, you know, he just started doing photography today. You know, he tested the waters doing the modeling thing, doing the uh, food photography, product photography. I mean, this took years of work to get to where he is at now. 
right? A lot of people out here nowadays, they think, you know what? Let me go buy a camera. And then somebody tells you, you know, oh, you took, you take nice pictures. And all of a sudden they think that they're photographers and they're like, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year doing photography. It doesn't work like that. And, no. you know, the aunt is a, a big example. Of it. He had his nine to five job and he had to use his off time to do the photography, use up his vacation set. But instead of taking a vacation, he'd go out there and shoot these models, you know, shoot these other, these events, these, these, these products just to get to where he's at. Finally, one day, like you said, you know, that opportunity arose, right? And I think we always, uh, we talked about this before on, on a personal level that sometimes you are, you're faced with that, um, with a wall. And that's when you take the leap of faith and you have to believe in yourself that you're doing the right thing. Because uh, if up until then, you won't take the leap. You'll Most of us tend to take the safeguard, take the safe way. Like, well, you know, nine to five is a secure job. It's secure income. Don't have to worry about, you know, anything. It's it's there. It's guaranteed versus, you know, you take the leap. What happens if you don't get business, ne- you know, next week anymore? What happens if something happens? Bam, pandemic hit. But you know what? There's a big lesson to learn there. And I know, I know you can touch on this and I can touch on it. That once this pandemic hit, you know, one of my questions for you is, you know, how did the pandemic affect you? Like for me, you know, I had the nine to five and I was also doing photography on the side, you know, like kind of like what you were doing. And the first, the first person to like to go, well, I mean, I wasn't the first person to go for my job, but I did lose my nine to five because of the pandemic and right. that's gone. And then so I, from there, where do I go? Sure. Um, and at that point, that's when I took the full, the leap of faith and just like, you know what? I'm going to do full-time photography. Let me just focus on my craft. Uh, let me refine my craft. Cause you know, I was at one point. And you, you're, you're, you've been one of my biggest critique and I love it. You know, you see my work, you know, from where I was posting, you know, a year, year and a half ago. And you're like, yeah, you're kind of uh, burning that, that photo. You know, when I was like, they're like, we're like over smoothing the skin on the, on some of the models right? to where I am today. And I'm now I'm like even more like, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. Now let's be more creative. Now let's see what I can do. Just, you know, come out of my head and, you know, that's kind of all been happening more because of the, because of the pandemic. And I just took that leap of faith. So for anybody that's out there, you know, don't just go and rush to quit your nine to five. Quit your nine to five once you know you're ready. Once you right. know you're ready that you either have the, you know, the, the capital behind you to make it make it work for a time being. Because that's what business is, does not just fall on your lap. You have to work for it. You have to look for it. Um, and two making sure that uh, you believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself and you doubt yourself, the client will know it. They will see right through you that you're doubting yourself, that you can't do whatever they're asking of you and don't just take your business elsewhere. Um, It's happened to me before. Uh, Has that ever, has that ever happened to you? Uh, Not really, not really. um, But I can see where it can happen for sure. Like, um, but at least in photography, um, it hasn't, it hasn't happened. I guess you typically when I've, when I've been booked, you know, it's kind of like I'm slightly uh, sought, sought after. So it's like, they already know. And it's like, I kind of walk in like that too, I guess. And that's not to be cocky, but I just, I just haven't felt that. Yeah. I, and I think it's mostly because the way I like my business that I've gotten has been through bidding. So I'm competing versus other photographers. Like they post their, their bid. I'm, I'm looking for this type of photographer on a bidding site. And I basically have to compete with these other photographers and then my edge. And I told you uh, for these, uh, the last contract I worked, I met up with the, with the client. You're kind of not supposed to do it, you know, on this, on these, some of these sites, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to just stand out from the crowd. I'm be like, Hey, uh, I'm willing to meet with you. Just give me a time and a date and uh, I'll go meet up with you and we'll have a one-on-one to see exactly what you're looking for. And, uh, if I'm the right photographer, obviously that went with me. So I, that that little that little you know thing of just showing up and meeting up with them when I didn't have to, you know, was what I think you know. And just I mean, just not just my skills as a photographer, but I think that you know that was what's uh, sold them on the contract. Um, yeah, but- for sure. I, I, I like that approach. I mean, I think you know photographers get a bad can get a bad rep uh, just in general. You know, so it's like you go and show your personality or, you know, also their personality too. You might be getting paid, but you might hate your client. You might not want to work with them. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> You know, so it's just like, 
I mean, if if you can, obviously, depending on how you're doing it, I, I definitely think that's a really good method because it kind of breaks the ice rather than you showing up, you know, big shoot and, and they don't know who you are. And now you got to kind of fill each other out and, you know, you kind of you kind of cut the cheese, you know, a little bit doing that. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's crazy. So for anybody who doesn't know, y'all might want to go back and listen. I think it gets to episode uh, two or three. Um, and you'll find out what my experience with one of the contracts and you let me know what you would have done in my situation. You know, like you can go ahead and look me up on Twitter at creative nice and just leave a comment. Like, tweet to me, you know, what, what you would have done? Did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? You know, but, um, I know you mentioned that one of the things that, you know, motivated you to take that leap was, uh, the Miss Kirby mag. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about how the actual magazine came to be and, Let's say I wanted to start a magazine. How would I go about it? Where do we, where do I even start? Because I, I think I've seen a lot of people say, I'm going to start a magazine. And then they never do because they're like, how, where do I start? Where, where can I, where do I get it published? Do I get it, you know, e-published only? Can I get a print copy? How does, how do you even go about that stuff? Sure. So like, yeah, we really didn't know how to do any of it, honestly. And, and honestly, like that's good and bad, you know, but the, honestly, that's, that's how I've taken all of my chances. You know, I didn't know anything about photography. I didn't know anything about video. I didn't know anything about music. Um, but I just jumped in there and I figured it out, you know, I, by trial and error, uh, via, via experience, via YouTube. I mean, there's no reason not to start anything. You know, it's just a matter of starting it, you know, and then figuring it out, you know, yeah, you know, you kind of hit your hit your knees on the ground a couple of times, but you learn, you know, and you're like, all right, you know, but basically uh, how, how, how I would advise starting a magazine is basically a you need a ton of content first, but obviously you need uh, you, you need product, you need either people, you need product. Uh, or whatever it may be, we got lucky. Well, I got lucky because Amber Nova, she was an influencer. She had 800,000 people following her. So she had connections. Those are so, goals right there. 800,000, those are goals right there. Yeah, so she she had a lot of doors. I was already opening doors on my own. And obviously I got her through, the, through, through one of my doors. But basically she had more people we can potentially access. And when it comes to models, excuse me, for the most part, um, you have to, uh, when it comes to models, basically how I seen it, at least with the magazine, especially uh, plus size, uh, shooting plus size women or any woman, you know, it's all about uh, comfort, safety, you know, especially if you're doing anything risque, uh, you know, so she she kind of trailblazed that way for me where basically I can come in with my aesthetic. We we kind of already had doors open through her. Uh, and basically, basically, you know, we we we, we started our first campaign, which was um, which was Ohio. Yeah. Was it Cleveland. Yeah. We went to Cleveland and uh, I think we shot. I think it was like six or seven models. And then we did that a second time. We went to Austin, Texas. And basically those two trips solidified the content because we were basically, you know, let's say doing two to three, um, uh, two to three models per issue per month. So basically, you know, the more you shoot, the more product you have, the more content you could later distribute. Um, and, and we used a template, uh, I forget the name of the template, but we used some type of template, which we basically ran through InDesign, which was, you know, you can basically off that template, you know, you can throw your pictures in, you can throw your text in. At first it was heavy text based, not heavy text based, but, you know, there was like kind of like a top 100 of the model, like what she liked, what she did like, you know, what type of modeling, advice, all this stuff. Um, and we basically, uh, filled that template up, man, every month, you know, end of the month we'd fill it up. We ran all of, uh, we would basically run the content through there. We would turn it into a PDF 
And then we would take it to a site called Issue, which basically turned that PDF into a digital magazine. Huh, so okay. basically, I could send it to you uh, on any iPhone, Android, whatever you can swipe, you know, and basically see the same content uh, that you would in a physical magazine. At one point, we did have a physical magazine, but basically we were breaking even. So it just didn't make sense for us to keep running it, uh -huh. uh, even though they were sought after. Because, of course, nobody's really printing like to get it to, to get a good discount. We would have needed like whatever, hundreds of thousands of magazines being printed. Yeah. Uh, that just wasn't the case to get them at, at, at cost and actually make some profit off of them. So we cut that. Uh, but, yeah, basically that was it, man. We We started the page. Uh, which was one of her old backup pages, which was that 50,000 people following her. And uh, we basically took her name off. Uh, it was actually called Curvy Slate uh, before it was called Miss Curvy Mag. And I'm really good at kind of coming up with names for stuff. And I finally came up with Miss Curvy Mag. It kind of reminded me of, uh, oh man, what's that teen one? There's something called teen something. Anyways, like, Anyway, so I came up with all these names, and, and it's funny because we, we actually tested it, which was cool because, A, it was her page, so her her um, fans were used to, of course, seeing her on it. Right. So, the, A, that was that's, – that's tricky, too. Like, if you're flipping Instagram pages, it's it, it could get tricky like that. So, anyway, so – and all of a sudden, imagine Curvy Slate popped up. So, I think we lost, like, 10,000 people. Just when that happened. Like, really? See, that's the, the, that's, that's a shocker crazy. because I, I was thinking the same thing. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen people do that. I've seen it on Instagram say, hey, uh, I have a backup account that has 10,000 followers. And then they kind of just sell it online. You know, I'd say that that's what you guys did. But people do sell those 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 accounts like that. And I wonder, like, damn, what happens if, you know, you start uploading content that they're not expecting. And then, like, bam, they just leave. Did they come back? Did you guys bounce back? And so, yeah, of course. Yeah, we bounced back. So <laughs> I think it was a name. I think it was a name. They didn't like curvy slate. So it was a great, it was like almost like test marketing. It was perfect. Like the the bleeding was happening. So we had to react. The name had to change. So it became Miss Curvy Mag. And then once that happened, and then of course it was also posting the right content, like, okay, Amber Nova was a certain size. So I can't really post somebody as not close to her size so we kind of got niche right off the bat so to a certain essence and and honestly determine if we made money or not you know they had the model had to kind of be close to amber size uh it just couldn't be any plus size model she couldn't be uh bigger than amber because then that was a different category of model um so yeah so so basically that's how it start. you know that's kind of the evolution of it um and it just let me see man it, it was i think it was austin texas so we're, we're flying I, I flew out i had never shipped my stuff before like i didn't have a pelican case I, you know i'm, I'm kind of ghetto when it comes to the setup <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh so <laughs> I ship my my Ronin. I ship a bunch of other miscellaneous things. Here's a big photo shoot in Austin, Texas. All these, you know, big models are coming out. One model she had over a million people following her. So like I'm I'm in my head. I'm super excited. Uh, so I ship everything out, you know, and I'm on the plane and I just got done watching uh, the McGregor. I think uh, yeah. The, the, the McGregor uh, documentary on Netflix and, you know, it's just, it's all this footage of him, you know, all these pre fights, you know, basically before he blew up. Uh, and man, I was in tears, man. I, I literally, you know, cause I was like, man, this is, this is what, this is everything I've wanted. I want to travel through photography, through what I love doing. And, and obviously we're growing this, this business and it, it, no feeling can replace it because you know what? At the end of the day, it's it was all me, man. It's it's something that I've I've curated for you know at that point I don't know it was like six years, I well maybe less. I'm not sure around there. It was it was wild before I got like this break where I felt like oh man, like okay, 
all I got to do is shoot content. All we got to do is get X amount of miles and I can literally distribute and do this. And, you know, obviously now people are starting to reach out to us, DM, and it's just a matter of time, you know? So it's just like, I could just see it building and forming, you know, everything that, that I had dreamed of, you know, at least to get out of my current position. So with that ammunition, I knew that the more I put into it, you know, the more I continue to just put my foot on the gas, eventually I'd be able to break through. And that, and so it, it gave me a lot of confidence to know that, you know, as long as, as long as I'm strategic about, my content and a who I work with or potentially who I might pitch to or who I just might just be an aid to, you know, I know eventually I can, I can get to where I need to get to, you know? And I, and I think, I think that's, that's important, man, is to, is to truly visualize all the steps, you know, or people or shots or whatever moves you may have to make, you know, just to get there and not really be niched to, you know, a 10 and two mentality because a 10 and two mentality is work. The 10 right. and two mentality is getting a paycheck, which is like you said, it's okay for some, but if, if you have a desire, if you have inclination of something else or a hobby or whatever it may be, like that's what you should be curating. That's, that's it. Regardless of the money, regardless of, uh, of, um, you know, uh, of what may happen, you know, at the end of the day, I think everybody feels better when they do something that's for themselves, that, that they love to do and that they, you know, I mean, you can't beat that because everything else is planned out for you. Everything else is somebody else's script, basically. It's somebody else's script, somebody else's plan, it's somebody else's um, envision of you. What about you? You know, and it's like, <laughs> so that's always been a driving force, man. That kind of the mentality and, of course, the opportunity. So, yes, that that's basically uh, kind of what catapulted the magazine and, and obviously gave me the confidence to to know that, you know, just give me my camera, give me an opportunity and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it to the next level. Right. And, you know, the big the big a big taking point from that is, uh, you know, talking about manifesting things. Right. Um you know, telling yourself like, "Hey, you know, I want to do this," and you, like you said, it was trial and error in the beginning until you kind of hit that uh that right formula to make it work, and then you just went went ran with it and look at where it got you, right? So right. These some of these photographers starting off, they think you know what uh, they can just start off right away and start making money. It does not happen like that. Most For sure. Of, I think I th I think this is my opinion. I think the first, you know, maybe year. Or two, you're not, you're basically not making any money. Uh, at at best, you're probably just breaking even, you know, and that's at best. Most of the time, you're probably shooting for free because one, you want to get content. Uh, I, because that's for me, like saying, I'll give you an example. I think the last time I shot a model was already, it's already been coming on a month. And that's, to me, that's already way, way too long. Obviously, there's a pandemic, so I always got to watch out who I'm working with, what I want to bring in a studio and all that. So I'm a little bit more meticulous as to who I'm working with as well. But I'm like literally like, wow, I think it's been too long. I need to keep shooting because I start to feel rusty. The good thing is, right. you know, since I've shot over the summer, I have a lot of content that I can go back to and keep brushing my skills off as far as like editing. But nothing beats having that camera in front of your, on your hands, in front of your in front of your eyes and taking those shots. Right. Um, I've even gone out to just say, you know what, I'm just going to go out on the street and just see what I can shoot. I just, cause I need to be constantly shooting, you know, keep those skills fresh. Uh, cause otherwise I feel like, you know, I'm just, you know, starting to slack off and I'll get rusty. And then what happens then if the opportunity pops up, but, uh, yeah, again, don't expect to make money right away. Um, obviously YouTube is a big, big, you know, resource for everyone. Uh, if you want to figure out how to start the magazine, go on YouTube um, I also don't get stuck in the idea of like, I'm going to just submit my content to a magazine because I, I constantly see a lot of photographers and models for that's for this, you know, they say, you know what, I'm going to go shoot and I'm going to submit my work to this magazine all the time. And they're like, oh, I'm a published photographer. I'm a published model. 
I'm like, people need to understand that there's a logic behind these magazines, you know, for and the example of Miss Kirby mag that was self run and self shot, right? You, you ran the magazine yeah. and you shot the magazine, correct? Yeah, it was a hundred percent. Yeah. So see, he Pitch, has full pictures cre- and videos. See, so in this case, you have full creative control of your magazine in whichever route you want to take it. Absolutely. You know, and you have the opportunity to make, you know, some capital from it. Uh, right. When you shoot content and you submit it to somebody else's magazine, all you're doing is promoting that magazine. Now, don't get me wrong. I'd love to shoot and get myself published on like Vogue, you know, you know, People Magazine, Time Magazine, depending on what the what the photo is. I would love to have that underneath my belt. But just know that most of those photographers are not getting any type of money from that. You know, so know that if you're going to shoot this, OK, I'm not going to get any money. I just doing it just for the let's say the self-fulfillment yeah. and, and that goes back to you know doing what you love because once even if you're not making any money but it's self-fulfilling it's worth more than anything than anything you can get paid right right so you know know that but if you're trying to make money it's probably best to you know figure out okay maybe i should start my own magazine what type of magazine start thinking about who you who the niche people is going to be like you said you guys got niche right away because you know of who the uh, the first model was and what the expectations were so once you find that, I think that's the key, you know, finding that. And then you can just target those people because once you, if you just, you know, what is it? You paint with the broad stroke, you know, you're going to just paint all over the canvas and you're really not going to get, you know, that masterpiece. But if you get that fine brush, you know, you, you fine tune it and you get, you know, stay within those lines and, you know, you make those, th- those fine lines as crisp as you can. That's when you got something and, you know, you, you're, you're doing something good with your magazine here. So. For sure. Let me elaborate a little bit on that. So basically, ninety uh, percent, well, not, like ninety-nine percent of people who ask to submit towards towards uh, Miss Kirby Mag, honestly, I just they got denied just because it's just like, well, hey, you're not even you're not even coming close to my aesthetic, you know. So it's just like there's going to be an inconsistency. Now, if we were low on content, you know, I, I would we would take it, or what we would do we would have a separate, we had, so basically it was Miss Curry mag, uh, which was basically the volume. So volume one through, I think we're at like 25 now. Um, and then, then there was also Miss Curry mag lookbook, which was basically like the runner up model to like, let's say the cover model. Right. So then that's where we would potentially dump some of the, submissions and if they came close and another thing too then it just became a lot of red tape because now you know they got to get permission from the photographer maybe they didn't they didn't get the photo release all these different things you know so it just became a, a, a hassle to kind of deal with that and but 90 percent of it was for me making the decision well does it even match the aesthetic and that's another thing like you know when starting something try to find a void you know, if you can, like, that's important. Like, where's the void? You know, if there is a void or, or, and it could be just in your market, it doesn't have to be the world and, you know, figure out your market, then take over the world after. But, uh, you know, and I feel like that's what Miss Curvy Mag did. Like all the pictures that I had seen prior to us starting what we did, they were, they were just terrible pictures. Like they really didn't depict a plus size model I felt the way that she should have been depicted, you know, it's just the angles are always awkward. The model looked awkward. Uh, and it's not because she was plus size it's because she probably wasn't comfortable. Whoever was shooting her didn't make her feel comfortable. So that's, you know, so I feel like we felt, we filled that void to really showcase a plus size model in a different way, you know, so that that's always a good way to potentially start something is, is, you know, for the most part, get out of the mentality of copy and paste the American way, get out of that mentality. Obviously, you know, there's, there's, there's jewels in that there's, you got to start, there has to be some type of template, but at the end of the day, like really try to see where you can put your spin to it because that's how, all of these establishments become establishments like Vogue, like your Playboy, like, you know, all these top magazines because they're doing things completely different, you know, and that's something to strive for in artistry and photography, you know, uh, 
even though, of course, we're constantly getting bombarded with, you know, everybody else's stuff. But regardless, like it's, it's very important just to have that as a self um, fulfillment type thing. You know, just try to be different if you can, you know, if you, especially if it's your own thing. Like if you're getting paid for something. Yeah, there's 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 expectation. There's customer base. You know, there's all the stuff that you need to do. But if you're doing it from scratch, try to make it yours. Yeah. You know? Amen to that. So I always there's always good and bad when running stuff like a magazine. So I'm curious. I want to know this. Can you tell us? Can you share with us just a short horror story of when, of running your magazine? Maybe working with the model. Like what it's like. What's that horror story that always sticks up to you that you're willing to share with us? Um, <laughs> well, oh man, it wasn't, well, I guess, I guess, so there's probably two, two light ones. Uh, one was we were shooting a model. She had a big following. She would have been at a million uh, plus people following her. But the thing is she kept getting her account deactivated. So by the time we met her, she was at 300,000 people following her. Um, you know, normal, normal shoot day, you know, her first big photo shoot with the, with the big lights and, and the Ronin and the camera and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, it was cool. She, she took, she took it, took it in stride, which is great. And, uh, you know, she's, she's prior to shooting, she's getting her hair and makeup done. And she's like, yeah, I got this problem with this one model. You know, and we really didn't think of anything of it. You know, that's that's her deal. It's cool. All good. You know, like, you know, sorry to hear that. You know, she just had this ongoing beef with this model. So uh, we shot. Everything went great. You know, I was looking forward to the next shoot. A couple months go by and we finally post her content. Well, that model that she was in beef with didn't like that we posted her content. So basically what she did, which I hated it, but I thought it was kind of like the art, art of war type thing, even though it was happening to me. That's just how I guess I've seen it at, at that time, which is, yeah, anyways. But uh, she started targeting our page, man. She started uh, basically flagging our content, you know, reporting our content. She had other people that were her admirers do the same thing. So eventually uh, we got shadow banned uh, and eventually Amber... Nova lost her account. She basically ended up calling her content out so much that Instagram took it upon themselves to basically take her content completely down and take her page down. So she had, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of a drastic story, uh, but that's just what you're dealing with. You know, that, you know, especially if you're, if you're doing anything where it's sensual or, or semi-explicit, too explicit, uh, especially now, I mean, it's 2021, I mean, they're cracking down completely, you know, not to discourage anybody, but they're, they're you know, the government is really cracking down on censor censorship, uh, especially when it comes to, let's say, sex workers or, uh, I mean, they're cracking down on cleavage, uh, any anything that's semi-prerogative, even though you still see people currently doing it. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't think it's going to live too much longer on Instagram. Like it's going to have to indefinitely move to Twitter because obviously that's what Twitter's known for and, and all the political stuff, but you know, so yeah, so that's, that's one, that's, I guess one example. The second example, uh, was just more so, uh, us being at an Airbnb and, um, cause that was basically 99% of our shoot locations just to not get that classic hotel look that a lot of people have. Uh, so we wanted to switch it up and, and do the Airbnb stuff. Uh, it worked out, but that was kind of another ding. You know, it's learned a lot. You know, basically, uh, I was shooting outside, had the model outside, and she was in a leotard bodysuit. And uh, happened to, you know, when you feel somebody looking at you or staring at you, I happen to look up and this guy's in the window and he's on the phone. And I'm like, okay. Well, 20 minutes later, the cops show up. You're kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, what are you guys doing? I said, oh, no, we're just shooting a photography. Oh, the guy, the guy across the street, street thinks you're shooting porn. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wait, I mean, I mean, regardless, I mean, what is, is what is it their business? What is anybody business? You can, I, I would think 
you're allowed to do whatever you want within the you know your the boundaries of your home. If you want to walk around naked in your backyard, feel free to do so. Just know you're probably gonna end up on on Twitter, right? Right, right. But so yeah, that happened, man. Uh, the guy called, cop showed up. They left. They couldn't do anything about what we were doing. You know, we weren't shooting for regardless. We weren't doing anything. We were in Austin, uh, Texas, and um, sure enough, man. About hour after that, the owner of the Airbnb shows up, and she's banging on her door. Oh wow! Beat, beat red in the face. She has a dog in her hand, and she's telling me to get the fuck out of get the hell out of her house. Wow! And, and I really, I just. I didn't even know what to do, man. And it's like, and of course, Airbnb has a policy that the whoever books the whoever books the place has has to be there. Of course, Amber she had left out that morning um, for her flight back home, and I, I was there just shooting. Um, yeah, man. And so that happened, man. And so yeah, Airbnb basically took my account down, so I got banned from Airbnb. Uh, Amber also got banned from Airbnb and she was helping other people, uh, with their Airbnb accounts, like using it or booking stuff for them. So about four other people got their accounts taken down. Jesus. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> that is, that, I mean, those are really some horror stories right there. I mean, I mean, they're lessons for people to learn, you know, people who want to sure. you know, dive into doing this type of stuff. I thought about it. You know, because obviously for me, I think it's cheaper to just rent an Airbnb for a hundred bucks or whatever. Maybe sometimes it's cheaper, probably 60, 70 bucks. Right. And, um, have everything there. It's already staged. You got, you know, furniture, you got bathtubs and everything's up to date versus going, me going out of my way and buying a, bit, a full couch just for a specific shoot or renting one. So, but those are some of the issues you can run into, you know, hopefully yeah. that's business, I guess though. Right. You know I mean? It's. It's like that. Yeah. And then for the other story, you know, that's, uh, that's what happens when you work with models and photographers in general, uh, and makeup artists too, you know, that they, some people just don't, cannot work with other people. And they also don't know how to keep things business as business because I might not like somebody or might not want to work with somebody, but for the right amount of money, I'll work with, I'll work with them. Why? Because I'm going to charge you a premium to work with you because either maybe you're just a uh, model who's just very difficult to work with, you know, and, but you want to work with me. So you're going to have to pay a premium. Sure. You know, because it, it ha- you have, I have to be compensated for, you know, how, you know, difficult you're going to be to work with. So, um, but those are some of the issues for people to take, uh, you know, take a, a lesson from, but for sure. Uh, so, just to wrap things up, so what are your goals for 2021? What, what are you planning to do in 2021? Man, that's a great question. I guess I haven't really thought out. Uh, well, I guess, okay. Um, my goal is to basically in, infuse and bring everything that I created together in one place. So meaning photography, video, and music all in the one home, basically. Um, yeah, and I'm currently doing it, you know, I'm, 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 I'm starting, I'm, I'm testing, you know, kind of, you know, how I want things to look, uh, methods of video and transitions and of course the music. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited, you know, just, just because now I don't really have to outsource too much, uh, hence to before, at least with the music, when it comes to video, you know, video isn't anything without good sound or, or something uh, that can bring it a little bit more to life. Or sound is everything. I mean, obviously, our voices, this podcast, you know, and, and topics you choose and people who you talk to, um, that all that stuff makes a difference, you know, compared to if you don't have that, you don't have the feel that you that you that you have currently have going for yourself as well with this podcast. So, um yeah, man, just 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 infusing my worlds, man, and 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 just doing it where it's cohesive, um, and also too like my strategy for music is I just I want to get to a point where I can drop a beat per week on Spotify because I mean you got forty thousand songs being uploaded a day. There's really no reason for me to uh, have an EP 
you know, I think if I drop a album or some type of beat project, you know, let's say once a year would be a goal. Uh, but right now it's just to currently rev up and uh, be able to drop at least once a week or once every two weeks, at least drop uh, some type of single uh, on Spotify, you know, just to just to get push, push this name out, push play dirty on the beat out and um, then then merge everything together. You know, then if I get an artist who wants to uh, shoot a video or who wants to flow on the beat or sing or whatever it may be, that could potentially be an opportunity for me to also shoot the video. Uh, also, you know, I want a cameo in anything that anybody touches of mine. I want a cameo in it, so I need to be in a video like Puffy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's just that's just moving forward. I, I want to have some type of face uh, in it. Uh, so yeah, man, that that's that's really it right now. You know, I haven't really set any goals in particular. Um, but yeah, man, I, I guess, you know, uh, obviously going back to, to Grubhub would, you know, is, is one of the goals. Uh, but obviously that, you know, pandemic, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of waiting for the second quarter, uh, just to see if I can get some news, uh, that, that that's going to happen. Cause then I'll be traveling around. Uh, but, but the music and everything, the videos, uh, if, if I do end up traveling, I kind of want to do blog style. I just, I just, I basically want to use everything I have as much as I can, you know, like all the time, like, and really not have to have, let's say a muse or model or plate of food, whatever. Like, I just, I just want to get to the point and I'm slowly starting to do that. I'm filming this currently, um, or just me talking to you, like, and just being conscious of that, you know, being like, Hey, you know, cause I posted something the other day, like, uh, this this la- this next stretch for me is, is it's all about catalog. It's all about legacy. Like you know, because that's that's what people buy. Like I mean, music catalogs. You know, somebody come up and swoop up all of the twenty four uh, volumes that I got of Miss Kirby Mag if they wanted to. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, ten thousand pictures or more, probably a hundred something videos. Uh, you know, like that's what this is about. Like, you know, it, it's, it's about, it's about catalog legacy and, and putting as much as I can of myself into my art. And I think, you know, for, for somebody listening to this, you know, think about that. Think about, think about what you want to contribute, not only to, to the world, but to yourself. Like, that's important, man. That's very important, you know, like, cause at the end of the day, you wanted to have some meaning to you and potentially obviously whoever's looking at it or even your family too, to be like, Hey, you know, grandpa, you know, grandpa D listen to this or check this out. You know, it's, I think that's very important. You know, I think we, we strive for uh, the whole algorithm of things, but I think, I think one should think a little less of that. and, And obviously that's important, but also think about, like what they want to do, you know, and, and, and how, and, and what they want to build on, even if it doesn't get seen, like, it, you know, that's it's very important. It's extremely important. Cause you know, if not, you get to a point where you feel like you're, you're in the rat race. You feel like, okay, I'm just, I'm posting for attention or I'm posting like, like it has to have some more meaning than just a post. Yeah. And, you know, it's about, it, it's it has about the to. story. <laughs> It's got to have a yeah. story. It, it can be. I'm just going to post this just to get some likes. I mean, that only goes so far. It goes so far, man. Attach that story to it. So, hey, I look forward to, you know, keep you know, talking to you, keep working with you through 2021. Uh, I just want to give you a big congratulations on everything you've accomplished in 2020. Um, Thank you. Believe me when I say this, not just as a friend, like I'll, if I, you know, I'll critique your stuff because I want you to get better. But sure. your beats have improved a lot since when you first started to where you're at now. Keep, yes, keep working at it. You know, you just you know, you know how it is with me and you. We talk all the time. So just want to say congratulations on everything you've done. All right. And um, sure. I hope 2021, you know, brings all those goals to for, to fruition for you. Uh, and hopefully we can work together over the summer and see what we can do. We've talked about it before. But it's uh, coming. 
just come. But uh, a big thank you again for coming on the podcast. Again, if anybody wants to check them out, you can check them out on Instagram at my art your eyes or was it no my eyes are up wait just, you got it right <laughs> first. Uh, my yeah. art your eyes and that play dirty on that beat all right so go check him out uh follow him on instagram and uh shoot him a message if you want to work with him all right again thank you for coming on the show right yes sir thank you man i appreciate you